Ladies and gentlemen, in the year 2022, the best chess engine or robot or computer, however you want to call it in the world, is named Stockfish. And I believe it's currently at version 15, 16. It's got a rating of 3,600, which is nearly 800 points, more than any human ever had. And we're only pushing higher and higher. But that was not always the case. And in this video, I'm going to show you a game where Stockfish was demolished, crushed, uh, eviscerated and was made to cry and was bullied and so on and so forth. And that was right around that time in 2017, just five years ago at the time of recording this video, when AlphaZero burst onto the scene and was developed by the Google-acquired DeepMind program. By the way, if you're an everyday viewer, you will notice that I am once again in my travel setup. And if you are an everyday viewer, thank you for being an everyday viewer. I do appreciate it. Uh, my videos will return back to my home setup tomorrow. Um, this game, but I figured, you know, we have a bad travel setup, but I will reward you with just an, an astonishing game of chess. Truly, truly, trust me, there is a move in this game that is so disgusting, I don't know, the chess gods had a smile when they saw it. So Alpha Zero began with the move Knight F3. In fact, Knight F3 is the meta, like it's, it's actually kind of the best move because it doesn't weaken anything in terms of pawns and knight f3 uh in terms of when the pawns move to the center and can be targets the move knight f3 almost always is accompanied with pawn moves as well so yeah actually technically knight f3 is the best move on move one but we're getting too too meta now and the position very quickly becomes what's known as a queen's indian defense uh and the queen's indian is a long-term opening uh long like a historical opening has been played many many times and the idea is to develop the bishop over here or over here, and this bishop either to e7 or b4, followed by some pawn moves. Now, Alpha Zero uh, played in the Catalan style setup, or actually, this is really called the main line against the uh, against the uh, Queen's Indian, and both sides castled. So so far, both sides have completed uh, what is known as early stage development. Um, it really. For like 99.9% .9 of you watching, including myself watching my own video because I'm a narcissist. Um, this position is equal, but not for computers. Alpha Zero, over the course of its development, was able to figure out that this bishop being destabilized, meaning this one being defended, means that white actually does have some ideas, including this immediate move d5, which is a fascinating concept because black can take this three different times. That is, black's entire setup is designed to prevent something going up to that square, and white plays d5, gives away the pawn, and plays knight to h4. Because this move made this square weak, and this move activates the bishop. So because of this bishop's destabilization on b7, white is able to take back on d5 in a moment. So what does black do? Black says, well, I'm going to keep, keep the pawn, right? I mean, you gave me the pawn, but now I'm going to keep the pawn. And this has been played many times before, and the computers played it as well. It's been played by humans, and basically, the push and pull here of the position is white is saying, your pieces look stupid. Your dark-squared bishop is stuck behind your knight and queen. Your light-squared bishop is, well, I mean, need we say more, right? And so after cd5 and knight d5, white continues infiltrating with the knight to the f5 square, and white always has nasty ideas of potentially damaging black structure or kicking the knight out of the center of the board and then taking over the center of the board. And this knight is just super strong, right? It hits the bishop. It threatens to jump into d6 when, it, when this knight moves. It also has eyes on something in front of the king. So white has something we call compensation. White has given up a pawn, but white has compensation for it. And I'm not talking about, you know, people that compensate for other things with having really large vehicles or... Um, you know, being really aggressive. In this case, there really is some compensation. So knight back to c7, and we see that compensation in full effect here. Now, white could potentially do something like knight d6, um, but as you see, the computer doesn't like it. The computer thinks that this is the wrong approach because black will simply take the knight and then try to trade the queen. So black will kick the queen out when it gets there. The best move here is what is played, which is this move e4. E4 restricts any central play, uh, and we are not at the crazy attacking phase yet. The computers are still in the opening phase. We are not at that phase just yet. Black plays the move D5, lashing out immediately at white center. Now, there have been many moves here. Uh, for example, I know the move Knight C3. I myself have played E5 uh, because I just like restricting the dark squared bishop. E5 is definitely not the best move, as you can see from the computer, but I really enjoy having this pawn wave and then moving my knight out of the center and getting F5 and F6 and queen to G4, like... Just getting this kind of avalanche going down this side of the board. And I like this move because it sort of locks the center of the board. It's not the best move, but I've played it in Blitz. 
E takes d5 though seems counterintuitive. Why on earth would the computer reallow the knight back into the center? Right? Like, what? What? Why would Alpha Zero? That wasn't that the entire idea of like you know doing all this so that this knight would have to go away and then you would have to play the move e4, right? Like, why would you allow the knight to go into the center of the board? Oh, because of this, just knight c3, down upon just trading pieces. But hold on a second. If knight takes c3, that means the queens are going to have to get swapped as well. Surely alpha zero has something in mind, right? Well, first of all, if queen takes queen, there's actually knight e7 check, which is called a zwitschenzug. And as you can see from the eval bar, you don't take the queen back. This is why in chess, you always have to look at the most forcing moves. Taking the queen is forcing, but taking the bishop with a check is more forcing than taking the queen. So you check the black king, and then you would pick up the queen and you would be up a piece. And trust me, alpha zero will win this position. All right. Instead of that, Alpha Zero plays a switch and zug right now, an in between move. In between taking the knight on c3, I go queen g4, and now I'm creating the threat of checkmate. Now, that we're not there yet, okay? Trust me, Stockfish did not blunder maiden one. Um, it's not Halloween, and Stockfish is not dressed up as you. So, queen attacks g7, and black can defend this in a few ways. Black can also play knight to e2 check, which deflects the attack onto the king, but white would just go here and then probably just go back. So. So, not necessary. Um, and so, black plays g6. We have check. And this. But okay, white doesn't have an attack anymore, right? I mean, this queen is about to get kicked out with f5. The knight is defended, but uh, black might very quickly break that defense, especially if this queen moves away. So, where is the attack exactly? So again, black can play maybe knight d7, maybe knight f6, maybe f5, maybe bishop c8 attacking the queen. Here's the thing though, when you play computers like alpha zero, there are no maybes. There are no maybes. And you need to be 100% accurate in what you are going to play. It's very easy for me to sit here and move other, well, I was going to say other people's pieces, but these aren't people. Uh, well, I don't know, alpha zero and stockfish, I don't know if you guys count as people, but bots. You know, and black does play bishop c8, which attacks this queen. And I, as I have already said, let, let's say the queen had retreated out of the position back to the e2 square. This would be really, really counterintuitive to the position. Um, and uh, you would be allowing some bishop g5, maybe some bishop d6, f5, and so on. So instead of that, the queen hangs out on the f4 square. Queen hangs out, defends this, prevents bishop to g5. Black offers another queen trade. And computers are so scummy, right? They're so scummy because they understand chess at a level, not because they're going to sell you like a car and it has a bad part in it. They're scummy because um, they will, they understand the, like the tiniest details of positions. So for example, white could have just gone to a4 right now, but instead white baited the queen forward and then goes to a4. Looks like a total waste of time. Looks like a totally idiotic decision. But by replacing the, the queen with the bishop, you now create attacks on the black queen, and then you will connect your rooks on the center lines, right? Which is where the rooks belong in most positions. So the rooks are going to be useful pieces as well. All the while, your knight is just bothering the king, just standing over there. And let's not forget this bishop, which just as a little bonus, little sprinkle of flavoring on top of whatever you it is that you're seasoning, just uh, laser beams the entire board and doesn't let uh, black move any pieces. Now, okay, so black tries to justify this, right? There, there are some weird queen dance moves. Black now says, okay, well, the queen has left. And, you know, Gotham in his video five years later did just say that if the queen is gone, the knight is going to be trapped. And yes, the knight is trapped, right? The knight really only has one thing. It has to gallop out of the position, still protected by this queen from the other side of the board, and then black would be booted again. Black would boot the knight again. The knight would go here, and then suddenly black is launching a counterattack. So black has used the pawns in front of the king to launch a counterattack. It could get really ugly really fast. Make no mistake, like, white's pieces can get completely restricted, and all of a sudden I'm, I'm not sure what's going on in this position anymore. So black plays the move g5, right? And Stockfish, given its track record of bullying every other chess bot, was like, <laughs> this dummy overextended, and this dummy is down a pawn, and this dummy has no attack. And Alpha Zero went, who are you calling a dummy? Rook to e1. What? So, rook e1 makes sense, because when the move g5 happened, the queen and the king both attacked the knight. The king was already attacking the knight, kind of, but the bishop was defending it. This move blocked the bishop, right? And uh, the bishop couldn't take the pawn because bishop takes. So rook e1 prevents the queen from taking on h6. Just so we're all on the same page. You don't want to do this anymore. 
because then I would play rookie seven, right? That's the whole point. And now you see white is winning. White is winning because this is really a, the queen should not be the main defender of the king. That's just, it's not how it works. The king needs the other pieces. So the king takes on h6 instead. The king grabs the knight and is like, yo, alpha zero, like, are you stupid? Like, what, what is going on here? I'm, I'm just going to walk back to the corner. Alpha zero has had such a keen sense of calculation and instinct that it was able to give away four points of material and understand that due to the completely restricted and frozen nature of the, those pieces that I have highlighted on the board, the attack will rage on with the move h4. So now there is a devastating threat. The devastating threat is to play rook takes c7 and bishop takes g5. And just, it's going to be a fork, right? So what does black do? Well, black plays the move f6. Now you might just say, well, Levy, didn't you just mention like running back? Yes. Stockfish really didn't like something here. I don't know what it was because it's like 10,000 times better at chess. I guess it just didn't like that white is just going to get all this initiative. Again, these pieces are not actually playing any key defensive role in the black position. White will play bishop to f4 and rook to d1. And the, the extra knight is not felt because it's literally not moved yet. So instead of that, black plays f6, defending g5, right? White plays bishop e3, which is a move that legitimately looks like it doesn't make any bit of sense. doesn't make any sense. In fact, chess.com Stockfish evaluates this, even Stockfish 15 evaluates bishop to e3 as an inaccuracy. And it very well could be in modern day engine speak, but for any human, this is just like a fascinating move. You just want to play rook d1, and you don't really care that you've blocked this because you've realized that Black has no time. Black just has no time to defend the position. It's insane. It's completely, like, it's just, there's no time to... Nothing you can do. I'm just going to attack you. I'm going to win. Black plays bishop f5, which is a natural move. You finally get the bishop out. You kind of arbitrarily defend some light squares. Now white plays rook a d1, and the queen goes to a3 naturally to trade queens. Okay, so... We're down a piece, so just so everyone's on the same page, even chess bots and humans, you cannot trade queens here if you're playing white. Your attack gets completely extinguished. Uh, this is the last thing that you want. Your queen is the most important piece on the board. And you might be wondering, Gotham, I've watched 12 minutes of this. That's like five times longer than my attention span. Where is this amazing move that you promised? You used car sale salesman piece of garbage. Well, I will tell you to continue to be patient because queen to c4, all right? No queen trade. I just described that. You don't want to trade queens when you're in a situation where you are under, well, you're down, you're da down material, but there is a severe attack on the board. So because you are down a knight, you keep the queen on, and there's still this and this and the queen over there, and you can maybe trade the bishop, and the rook is going to come down the board. But so far, it's not exactly clear where any of this is going to happen. And Stockfish plays b5 and basically says the queen has no moves. The queen either has to go to b3 or all the way down here. And I mean, the move queen e2 in and of itself probably does not lose the game. But as you see from the eval bar, it's already a complete misstep in the wrong direction. Now, I want you to think about how to rescue the queen in a way that is not completely obvious. And if you say, oh, Levy, queen d4, no, nah, it's an obvious move. You say, Levy, uh, 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 no, no, no. You cannot move the queen right now. Here, alpha zero uncorked. Probably one of the most savage maneuvers I've ever seen, if not the most. Like, one of the most beautiful geometric ideas I've ever seen in my life. I was actually shocked I have never had this in a YouTube video. I don't know how I've, like, somehow managed to miss this. Um, so I'm going to show it to you. Danger levels, right? Alpha zero knows. Queen is under attack, but the king is worth more. H takes g5 check. But what exactly is the point? You haven't improved anything. What, like, there's still no obvious way to save the queen. No, there is. Queen h4 check. So you replace the pawn and it's check and you cannot be taken because of this. But so what? King g6. Now the queen is hanging again. So if you manage to get this far, that's already impressive. But where is the queen going to go? The queen can still only go to d4. Or it can go to h1. I, like, I don't know if that leaves a strong impression on you, but this entire maneuver to take, rotate, and go down to the corner of the board is just, I mean, it's just purely disgusting. The whole point here is, had the king gone there, white would have taken and just bulldozed, right? White would have taken on g5, but because the king defended, now you need to turn your attention to trading off the light squared bishop of the king and then attacking on the light squares because the king is now on a light square. 
but what if the king now moves out of the way? The king couldn't do that last move because you would have taken, but we don't have that. Yeah, we're still going to trade. Alpha Zero is so smart. Well, naturally, I don't have to compliment basically the strongest chess bot ever invented in literally four hours. Um, I have an entirely separate video called Alpha Zero Completely Crushed a Stockfish. That one was, yeah, that one was pretty brutal. The whole point here is that Alpha Zero realizes that with the Queen stranded, with the Open King, and with the lack of development, Black is not actually up any four points of material whatsoever. Like, there, there is no four points of material on the board that can save Black. And look at this. Bishop takes, and it still looks like there is no su sufficient attack. Bishop d4 check looks like a good move, but simply Bishop to f6, if I'm not mistaken. And you don't have Rook e7. Rook e7 would win the game if not for this stupid piece being able to take it. So what does white do here with no obvious attack? Well, you just went down to h3. Let's go back up. Do you know what the idea of queen h3 is? You would think, oh, obviously it's, you know, infiltrating like this and so on and so forth. Nope. The idea of queen h3 is to move the king up and go here. A few moves ago, the queen survived an attack, went down to the corner of the board, gave the king a kiss on the cheek, and now the attack starts the other way. King to g2. Rook to h1, and it's going down the center, and it's going up the side of the board, and there's just nothing that black can do about this. The craziest thing is the computer, like, Stockfish still thinks this is equal. Queen takes a2, Rook to h1, attacking down the h-file, Queen all the way back to g8, only move because you have to prevent Queen h7, and now white plays... Well, I mean, this, yeah. <laughs> if I gave you a, a, a 20 guesses here, it would be impossible to find this move with white. You have a bishop, you have rooks, you have a bunch of pieces, but you play the move c4 and the point of c4 is just to cut away the diagonal forever like you just use this as two infiltration points and the bishop can camp on c5 for the for the rest of the game but it's not even that the move f4 now wins for white because there is no queen a2 check I told you, it's to block the queen's diagonal. And if the queen takes, well, we know what happens. The move c4 is just incredible. I mean, I mean, it, it, it's you're trying to play a four and use every last bit of resources that you have to attack. Black plays the move rook to e8 to prevent the move f4, right? Because now f4, there is simply rook takes bishop. And at that point, you're just down actually too much material. So instead of that, white just plays bishop d4. And the defenses are slowly being stripped away. And you would think that black can somehow defend himself by playing bishop d4, rook d4, something along these lines. But finally, Stockfish makes an inaccuracy. Here, Stockfish had to find bc4 once again and somehow walk its king into the center and, like, not lose. Instead, Stockfish plays this move. And Alpha Zero very swiftly and very cleanly executes the kiss of death by taking the rook. And the most incredible thing, the most incredible thing, you know how White was just setting up an attack on the h-file? All that's gone. We need six. That apparently is the winning move. Apparently, if white had executed the attack, it wouldn't have worked anymore because you cut away the rook and the bishop. You don't actually have any more material over here. So queen e6 is winning for white because after knight d7, there is simply rook d1. That's, I mean, and, and black has to develop. That's the thing. Black, like, if black plays queen d7, you will give a check on e5 and it's made in four. The rook actually does get in. So because of the threat of checking in the center of the board and you would think oh queen c7 stops that yeah then i just go queen e3 and i just i get another check somehow so knight d7 white goes here and we get rook d8 and up in exchange and as always engine games very rare i mean they, they very rarely need to finish an attack in checkmate games do end in checkmate but they don't have to finish an attack in checkmate they will simply go to an end game and this end game is completely winning for white uh because white is going to win all the pawns. Now, white is not going to blunder a fork. Rook b5, there is knight d6. But instead, white will play g4, kick the knight out of the center, restrict the knight, and just go on to take all the pawns, keep their pawns safe. And what makes this a winning endgame is black's structure is really bad, really. That's, that's, that's really ultimately what it comes down to. Black is unable to fend with the defense of everything because rook takes b5 is falling, then this pawn will fall as well. And alpha 0, 1... One of the most brutal and genius games I've ever seen in my life. I mean, can we just really quickly go back and appreciate H takes G5 and Queen H4, Queen H1? I mean, this is just ridiculous. <laughs> like, this, is, this is so savage. Um, 
and then this, and then creating the attack down the H file the second that you got to open it, threatening with Rook H1, forcing Black to play defense. I mean, C4 is just is is just astronomical. It's just otherworldly levels of brilliance. Cutting off the queen's diagonal. And now bishop d4 removes the bishop. And at the end of the day, it's the auxiliary idea. It's the other side infiltration. I mentioned a while ago that this is not the idea. It actually was the idea because of the way the position played itself out. And now we just go rook d1, pick up the material, and we convert the rook versus knight endgame. Well, if you made it this far in the video, I hope it was worth listening to my intro and me telling you that this was a brilliant game. If you clicked off, then bye. You'll never see this part of the video. Um... Good riddance, some might say. Thanks all uh, for uh, the support. Even though I'm on my travel setup, I hope you enjoyed. And uh, I will see you back home uh, in New York tomorrow. Get out of here.